Hello and welcome to Diagonal Move. My name's Neil. Today we're off on a trip down memory lane with Dungeon Quest, the Games Workshop release of a game from the 1980s, which is notorious for its challenge level, a game that you are as likely to die on your first turn as you are to reach the end of your quest and escape safely. A dungeon crawler where it's perhaps best to describe it as a push your luck with a dungeon theme rather than a true dungeon crawler. Okay, so the aim of the game is to take your adventurer off on this ever winding quest through the dungeon and you'll draw a tile each turn to um, uh, map the dungeon. You will, with luck and a bit of skill, arrive here at the dragon's chamber. If you survive the dragon, you will then have to make your way back out through one of the four entrances. It doesn't have to be the one you start, but one of the four entrances before you either die through combat, die through misfortune, or die because the sun has set. It's a game which um, I've had for a great many years now. This is a version of the game I've had for a long time. It lived in the cupboard for about 20 years and um, relatively recently resurfaced, and now I play it every once in, every once in a while. But anyway, the four, four characters we have today, I'm gonna to play it with the solo rules, so um, it is a multiplayer game with, with a solo option. The only real difference is, rather than using these tiles at the top of the top of the screen there, uh, these would be the multiplayer tiles, and you, you would just play them by uh, revealing and, and checking on, on on a, on a matrix. Um, instead, just going to roll some dice on the table um, to determine the effect of the combat um, for for our characters. And the four characters we've got are the four from the originals, although I confess I may not have all the original pieces here. Some of them may be from the expansion, but various bits have got lost over the years, as you might expect. Um, but I think most of the original bits are here, certainly enough to, to make it a fun game. Anyway, our four characters are Elderan Shawshot, who is a ranger, has a ranged combat, uh, quite good luck, but is pretty useless at everything else. Sir Rohan the Knight, who is very strong, uh, well-armoured, but again, kind of rubbish on the agility stakes. Vorik the Brave, the adventurer, probably the most all-rounded one, very good luck, pretty good agility, and middling for strength. And then Ulf Grimhand, the Barbarian, who is um, slightly uh, towards the, the strength side, but not so far as Sir Rohan the Knight. Okay, each turn what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tile. And, and well, one of two things you can do, you can either draw a tile and as part of the movement, or you can search the tile you're on. As this is the beginning of the game, we will um, need to draw a tile. So, starting up the top there with Sir Adaran Shawshot, um, we will draw a tile, and we are going to move him here. The tile that we've drawn is a chasm, I believe, a chasm. Each of these tiles has a sort of an arrow, which indicates the area you're coming on. There will be a feature, and then you will, will come in. Each of the room types has a description that will tell you exactly what it does. Most of the things that they do are pretty horrendous. Um, and I believe for a chasm, you take a room card as you would normally do. And there's a great pile of tiles and cards and stuff. What you do is you just reveal one of these, these room cards and it will tell you what, if anything, you meet. We have met nothing in that particular particular turn for, for El Adaran, and therefore his turn is over. Moving swiftly on to... Um, so Rohan the Knight in this corner here, same thing, we'll come onto the board and we will pick a tile. And we have found a bottomless pit. That's a brilliant start, isn't it? We may well have death on the first turn after all. So let's just check the effects of the bottomless, bottomless pit. Okay. You do not take a room card. You uh, roll a d12. If you roll your agility or less, you make it across and take your next turn as normal. If not, you fall into the pit and out of the game. Now, unfortunately, Sir um, Rohan's agility, being a bit of a, an armoured tank, is a grand total of four. So on a d12, chances are we're gonna do badly. Um, roll on a d12. We've rolled a five. And that five is higher than the agility, and so, very first turn of the game, Sir Rohan 
has fallen and died. And this is why I'm doing a solo game with all four characters, because you'll never see it if I was to do it any other way. So moving on to Volric the Brave, our adventurer, good old fighting fantasy style adventurer down the bottom here. We will move into the game. We've drawn a normal tile. Makes a nice change already, doesn't it? Take a room card and we found an orc. Now, combat will ensue, possibly. What you need to do is you need to decide whether you're going to attack, wait and see, or try to escape. And having drawn one of these uh, monster cards, you'll think about what you're going to do, and I'm just going to wait and see with an orc. And on the back will tell you uh, whether they run away or whether there's some kind of combat. And for an orc, under wait and see, we have three life points. Uh, and a combat. And it's quite simply, with the solo game at least, it's simply a case of rolling the dice, reading it up on the table and seeing what happens. Now, Vorik the Brave has a life of 15, which makes it sound like he's going to do quite well against the three life point orc. However, he rolled a two, which means he loses a life point. Roll it again, we've rolled a 10, the monster loses two, and an eight, the monster is one. Okay, pretty good combat. The monster is dead. That is the end of Vorik the Brave's turn. He's only lost one life, which is quite encouraging. It's entirely possible to die in a combat. In fact, in some ways, the best way to think about this game is as a very early version of Dark Souls. Um, but without any programming, you just pure luck, most of it. Okay, when my camera stops wanting to fall over, we can move. Of Grimhand, and this is one of the ones where I'm not sure if it's the original model. Um, probably worth pointing out as well, these models um, have worn the scars of my teenage attempts at painting for many years now, so apologies if that burns your eyes somewhat. So we've drawn a normal room. I'm going to draw a room card, and now we have a Champion of Chaos. Not great. Um, so I think this time I will again wait and see just to see what happens with our Champion of Chaos and our Champion of Chaos in this instance is combat for life points. So back to the dice. Olv is somewhat stronger than um, uh, Vorik, but not hugely. And with a roll of a six, um, both Olv, Grimhand, and the Champion of Chaos lose one. Of Grimhand starts with a life force of 16. Um, okay. In order seven, I believe we both lose, the monster loses one and a seven. That's encouraging. Um, a two. Our character has lost one life point down to 14. And nine, monster loses a life point. And seven, monster loses a life point. So, of Grimhand has lost just two of his life points. Um, we do have certain, the characters do have what are called magic rings in the game as well, um, which sadly did do no good whatsoever for. Um, Sir Rohan, however, the Ring of Healing is in Olf's possession. So if ever he does come across a, um, a, a situation where he is running very low on health points, he can get a bit of a boost to his health. So Rohan I sadly had a Ring of Opening, which was only going to help him open a door. So um, not great if falling into a pit. Anyway, that is the end of the first turn. And we've already lost one character and several others are suffering already. Okay, now we can search with El Adoran um, or we can move out into the next room. Because at the bottom is the chasm, we can only move in one direction should we choose to move. And this time we have moved into a normal room, which is pretty good, but you have to orientate it as per the direction of arrow. So perhaps. No. These normal rooms can be a little bit frustrating as well. 
particularly when they're empty. And one of the complaints about this game is that it's entirely possible to do nothing on your turn for several turns in a row. Um, so, uh, Sir Rohan's dead. So Vorik the Brave again down the, down the bottom here. Let's move him this way. Oh, no, sorry, can't do that. That way. Taking a tile and we have a rotating room. Now what happens on these is you place them as normal and they magically flip themselves around 180 degrees and you can no longer escape. You cannot search these rooms either. We haven't done a search yet, but we will do plenty of it as time goes by. Um, worth noting that that is the end of the turn for Volric. There's no room card drawn or anything like that. And now Ulf Grimhand down in the corner. He can go one of three ways. He can come back if he chooses to, which seems a bit pointless at this point, or we can go on. I don't like being too close to the to the wall here in case we get something horrible. So let's go this way. Um, and we have a, another normal room, which is quite nice. He's quite, quite lucky, it seems. And we found a dead adventurer. So of course, if you find a dead adventurer, you have the option of looting said dead adventurer. And there's a whole bunch of these cards here called corpse cards. And you just pull one off the top and you may find something good. You may find not find something bad. And in this case, we have a potion. Now potions um, are interesting in the sense that they are an entirely random effect. So what you do is you just roll a d12 and read what it says. Now on a roll of one, you will gain four, four life points. On a roll of 12, you die instantly. Um, so it is quite a risk. So, and that is a risk I think we will pass until later. End of the turn then. Turn three. El Adaran needs to get a wiggle on, so he's going to come this way. And we have a normal room, but this time orientated that way. And the room card revealed is a Champion of Chaos. Now, El Adaran has the benefit um, of ranged combat. He is the only character, at least in the main, the base game, that can do this um, and it makes up for what he lacks in certain other areas. Um, in terms of the way that works, I'm just going to have to have a have a read. It's been a while since I've played with that character. Um, so basically he has four arrows, only four throughout the entire game. When they are gone, they are gone. Um, and you may fire once before the monster card is drawn. And that monster card is this, this card here, rather than the room card. Um, and quite simply, as with so much else, you roll a die and see what happens. In this case, it is a d6, so we'll fire an arrow at our champion of chaos. We've got a three. And where is the, ah, it's on the board. Right there, right in front of me in blue, where I would clearly not see it. And we rolled a three, therefore we have wounded the uh, monster. So the monster loses d6 divided by two life points. That means he's lost one life point. And then we just basically fight the monster. So we've attacked. Um, the monster is a champion of chaos with five, uh, but the injury there reduces that to four. And then we roll on the table again. An eight. We both lose a life point, I believe. Oh no, the monster's lost one. That's pretty good. Um, and a seven. The monster's lost one. On a seven, the monster's lost another. And on a two, El Adaran has lost one. And uh, on an eleven, we ignore the results and roll again. And then on a nine, the monster loses one. Now that one is doing a good job there. Um, and I have to say, over all the years I've had this and the many, many times I've played, but I mean, admittedly not a huge amount over recent years, but certainly when I first had it many years ago, the um, combat was always a thing for me that let the game down. It's, it's wildly random, uh, but it's fun. With, wild, with its wild randomness. But the combat, multiplayer or solo, is probably the one thing that I'm not a huge fan of, but 
it is what it is. I think there's a lot about this game that would probably not would not find its way into a game these days. But then, of course, the game is best part of 40 years old. So we've drawn, uh, uh, sorry, Vorik the Braves moved into a room and we have another combat, Death Warrior, basically a skeleton. Um, and we will hold on and wait and see with that one because that's going to be pretty horrid. Um, and we have combat with four life points. There's no um, benefit or denying uh, in terms of ranged combat for any other character. So this one, we just fight our way to the death. We both lose one on a roll of a four and a 10. Oh, the monster loses two. That's cool. Now I say that's cool, but um, Vorik the Brave is now down to a life of 13 and he's out of a total of 15 and he's got a long way to go. It's only turn three. And um, hmm, yeah, it's going to be tough if it keeps working away at the life like that. Okay, Old Grimhand down the bottom here with his with his axe and his horned helmet. I'm going to go this way. Pull out a tile. Another normal room. We have a lot of normal rooms today, which is probably quite good for the for. for survivability of my adventurers, but perhaps not so exciting for the for the video. Nevertheless, on the room card, we have found 30 gold pieces. And joking aside, if Ulf Grimhand was to turn around now and escape, we would probably win. It's that level of challenge to, <laughs> to, to fight against this, this system. Um, but we will continue. And let's move on to the next turn. Um, well, Adoran will move and we will draw a normal room, but this time there's only two exits. Taking a room card to see what we found. And we found a bracelet. Ah, see? Now, oh, Adoran might win if he runs away now. Pop that with his character card. And Vorik gets his go. And again, we'll move. Only one direction can go in. Uh, you see, this is this is why I'm not keen on being by the walls. The exits, if that was at right angle, we'd be stuck. Um, but any, as it is, we can leave when the time comes. But first, we need to draw a room card, and this time we have another orc. A lot of orcs coming to the, to the fore at the moment. I will wait and see again. Maybe they'll run away. No, the orc will fight with a... A combat of two or a four, and that is a loss for both the adventurer and the orc. And the next one is a one, We're losing a life point for our adventurer, and then a six, both losing a life point. And so, this is what I mean we have won that combat, however, Ulrich. Not Ulrich, sorry, Volric has lost a third of his life already. And we've <laughs> end of turn four nearly. Um, and there's no way to recover without that ring of healing, which is being hogged by old Grimhand. Okay. And speaking of old Grimhand, oh, camera's going flying. There we go, Old Grimhand has a normal room. And inside that normal room, we have a trapdoor. Now the trapdoor, we rolled against our agility to um, see if we fall in it. Um, and then if we do fall in it, we live life. And, our, and next turn we have to try to escape. Um, and so on, if you, you know, until you do escape. Um, if you survive and you don't fall down the, the trap door, if, you're, if you pass your agility check, you carry on as normal. So first thing we need to do then is find a d12 and we need to roll a five or less on a d12. Again, not great odds, but we're fine. Trap door avoided. And turn is a normal normal turn okay 
that's fine but that was our room card for the turn so the turn is over that means we can search next turn should we choose to um, move now here we have a, another room, a normal room but here we have a door we want to go through the door we do have to do a room uh, uh, draw a room a door card to see if we'll go through through the door which can be hit or miss like much else in this game um, but for now we just place a the tile according to its orientation which is actually sending us off this way and um, draw a room card we have the curse of the wizard um, now what on earth is the curse of the wizard ah, as soon as you draw the card all the corridor tiles in the dungeon will rotate now corridors are specific tiles and we do not have any of them at the moment so that card will just be placed off to one side okay uh back to our adventurer again stuck on his his forward path ah and a portcullis slams shut behind us we would need to do a strength check to return this way but at the rate we're going that's unlikely seeing as we can't get out anyway uh room card a sneak attack ah hell um that's going to be uh, another thing about this game is the reference sheet often refers you back to the rule book for certain things and a sneak attack is one of those and i believe it's a die roll of damage yep d12 minus luck and he's quite a lucky so and so so with an eight of luck eight minus his, uh, die roll of eight minus his luck of eight it means there's no no damage to his sneak attack and then combat takes place as normal so let's have a look and see what we've got obviously he's, we've got had an attack um so we cannot run away or anything like that so it was a death warrior that attacked us which is the skeletons um and that is a health of five old Vorik is not doing well with the attacks it does have a ring of warning which uh, detects a trap rather than prevents a combat which is unfortunate anyways we rolled a seven i uh, rolled a three oh three i think we both do we both lose nope just 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 for it. so we're now down to nine life points we have a six one life point each. A one, we lose a life point. A two, we lose another life point. That is two thirds of our life points gone. We roll twelves. We roll elevens. And again, a three and three, we lose a life point. And on a six, we both lose a life point. Vorik is going to be dead very soon at this rate. Uh, a one, we lose a life point. That's three life points we now have. Uh, a four, we both lose a life point. And finally, one more roll. It's a nine. The monster loses a life point. Wow. We are now down to two two life for Vorik the Brave. He's brave, but really he's not very hardy. Um, needs to learn to fight a bit better, I think. Um, okay, that's the end of his turn. So we're off to our barbarian character here, who is going to move on in an attempt to get ever closer to that treasure. And I think we'll go this way. And we have a portcullis. So again, we have the dungeon working against us, slamming shut behind us. We would need to roll our strength strength check to get past that. Uh, but as it stands currently, we just have a empty room to deal with. So a moment's respite for him. Time moves on, um, and El Adaran gets to move. Now we can open the door or try to open the door or we need to go that way. Let's try to open the door, I think, because we um, 
Ah, we do need to get closer to that dungeon and the, the path is going the wrong way currently. I just believe, just double checking. Okay, quite simply, we draw a door tile. If it's open, it's open. If it's not, it's not. And it is shut. Okay, now I believe we do nothing else in our turn. That was our turn expended. Yep, Eladarin stays where he is. Poor Volric then, what's he going to do? Oh gosh, um, at the rate he's going, he's going to be nowhere near. He can't go back. Just carry on. We could search. Search is risky. Mm, very risky. But so is everything else in this game. This is a corridor. Thankfully, we don't have to rotate that at the moment. What it does mean is he gets, depending on how you look at it, a bit further away from the goal or a bit closer to an exit, which is currently where Sir Rohan is um, lying at the bottom of the bottomless pit. Okay, next tile we have mm, a room orientated toward the right, meaning that at the very best, Rohan Volric is stuck unless we can find a secret door through searching so but let's see what we found in the room first and we have an empty room moving on to Ulvican and we are we still have freedom of movement for him so draw a tile normal room draw a room card an orc and we will wait and see. The reason I'm waiting and seeing so much is because quite often they will run away, some of these lesser monsters. Um, yep, the orc has run away. No problem. No monster to fight. But that is the end of the turn, the end of the round. Aladarin again. Um, okay, now we do we want to make a serious attempt at getting Eladarin into this room here with the dragons sleeping. We need to seriously consider doing it sooner rather than later because once it goes basically beyond where this the board joins here, um, the chances of getting back again are pretty much zero. Um, uh, so let us try the door again. Door is closed. Another mechanic you'd probably never see <laughs> in um, in games these days is, is a, essentially doing nothing on your turn. Um, but anyway, we have done that, and poor old Volric is stuck. So we could return, which would mean we'd have to, to, to draw another room card, and then to progress further, we would have to um, lift the portcullis and keep going, and, and, and it's all a bit pointless because we cannot get past this door. So basically what we can do is just search. Um, you can search any one room twice um, in consecutive turns, after that, you cannot search anymore. You have to move on if you can. Um, so let's do a draw a search card. And we have found a secret door, which is excellent. So what that means is we get to move our character out of the room. Given his currently poor state of health, we're just going to try and have him survive. So we're going to go here in the hope that the next tile we, we produce will allow us to come this way towards the tower exit where Sir Rohan met his untimely end. And sadly, no, we have a blocked room, um, meaning we have to search again next turn, but first a room card and we've found a crypt. Good things can lurk in crypts. We can find treasures and potions or just traps and monsters and other things. Either way, you pull a pull a card we have a bracelet 120 gold pieces if we can survive of Grimhand will move I'm hoping to get at least one of these people into the dragon chamber and we are going to be going the wrong way um, but at least we are still relatively healthy relatively uh, 
good fortune. We have a goblin, the weakest of the monsters, generally speaking. And so I'll wait and see, because there's a reasonable chance they'll run away. And yeah, the goblins run away. But again, our turn is over. And now we are... Yep, just checking me how... There we go, that's the turn track we should be on. Um, and we have this chap's turn. I don't really want to go through the door again at the very... At least I want to at least move somewhere, do something with that character. We have a cave-in. Aladarin is wishing he had stayed where he was. Um, now, cave-ins, there are two different types. Cave-ins on the tiles and cave-ins on the cards. Cave-ins on the tiles allow us to take a turn uh, as normal. However, on the next turn, we suffer the effects of the ceiling collapsing. So let's just take our current tile, which is empty. So the turn ends and Vorek has the search and we have found a trap. Huh, great. But we do have our ring of warning. Now a ring of warning, oh, bashing the camera, our ring of warning here will um, prevent a trap which we, we, we will use, because we would not survive a trap. Um, okay. Uh, search card goes there. Old's turn. Yep, that's this. Do I, do I search? Do I, do I move? I'm going in the wrong direction. Um, but I do have some treasure. Honestly, I think I'll be the only one getting out of here at the moment is, is this guy, even if we don't make it to the Treasure of the Dragon's Horde. Um, but yeah, let's move. Um, a normal room with a door. Okay, uh, okay. Vampire bats, damage, d6, minus two. Three, minus two, just the one damage. He still has 13 life. Okay, D12 for El Adelin, and I believe we check our agility. We rolled a nine. We needed to roll agility or less. Our agility is eight. So sadly, we have failed our agility check and we are trapped, missing our turn. Hmm, yes. Uh, Vorik here is going to have to search. I think this is the second. Oh, look at He is the luckiest unlucky character in the history of this game. Um, let's just see if he can survive, shall we? A normal room, which is lovely. But we do have to draw that room card. And he's found a troll. We will, we can't escape because we have to come backwards when we escape, but we can't escape through a secret door. So we are going to have to wait and see or fight. And I think we'll definitely wait and see. And our mountain troll, um, wait and see. No, nope. yep, mountain troll, mountain troll runs away, which is quite, quite remarkable. Um, so he's he has escaped to fight another day. Um, okay, we have a door for of Grim Hand, or we can go this way. I suspect I would like to go this way in the hope that we can start to work our way out again. I'm very unconvinced we will escape if we went all the way into the Dragon's Chamber. Don't forget you have to go all the way in, do what you do, survive the Dragon's Chamber, but if you wait the Dragon, terrible usually, um, and then come out again um, so yeah, we're, I think we're just going to try and get him home. Um, um, which means we still need to draw a room card and we have to shuffle, take another one. This is where I have to make sure that those ones that we pulled out earlier. No, no, no I don't think we do actually. No, I don't think we reshuffle the ones that we discarded, just the ones that we have in the draw pile. Okay, an empty room, anti-climax. Um, next turn though, 
the ladder and is still stuck. Eight or less on a d12. And we have a 10. He is stuck once more. And Vorik, let's try and get him out. A corridor. Excellent. Means we can go again. Now poor Carlos has slammed shut. Um, which means we draw a room card. We have an empty room. Let's move, move our poor old server hand off the board. He's getting in the way now. Uh, he's still, he's still falling. Um, right, and we are down to Olve. Olve has got a door in front of him, but once he gets through that door, he has a relatively clear path, which means we can do lots of searching. Gather as much treasure as we, as we treasure as we can. So let's try and get through that door. And the door has opened. Excellent. In which case, we move on to the next tile and draw a room card as normal, um, which is a goblin. Um, I think we'll wait and see again. And yeah, the goblin runs away. It's definitely a, a help having. Um, uh, an idea of what happens with the monsters, and I think that's probably where the the judgment comes into this game. Um, there's actually a, an entire an entire section in the rulebook on the tactics, and the first twenty times you play it, there's no there's no tactics; it's all random. Um, but as you get to know, you know, particularly the combat, which creatures are likely to run and which creatures are likely to fight and be strong, that's when you can figure out how to best survive the dungeon. Uh, El Adarin's turn, and he is still trying to get his way out of that caved-in room. So, d12 agility check. His agility is actually pretty good, so keep rolling less would be easy. There we go, fine, fantastic. We can now take our turn. Um, and our turn is going to be to move that way where we have come across a normal room with a door and a crossroads. Okay, now this is interesting. We have to draw a room card, but once I've drawn the room card, we can either go this way in the hope that the tile will take us back and we have a free, free path out, or we can come this way. Now, the chances of us getting here and getting out again are pretty low, but we can try. It, why not? It'll be fun. But before we do that, we will have to um, draw a room card. Sneak attack. D12 minus your luck, was it? I think. Um, yep, D12 minus luck. He is a fairly lucky character. Three minus a seven, so we do not lose any... Um, anything for the attack by the skeleton. Um, El Adrian does have a luck of seven, um, but we do have to fight that monster, and that monster is a skeleton, which is a death warrior. Um, we are attacked, we are, do have to either attack or escape. Uh, I do not want to go back into that cave-in, so on the attack we have to fight the death warrior at five life points. Um, does have the bow and arrow, but I, top of my head anyway, we cannot do it because of the sneak attack three, uh, which is going to be a minus one to us, I think. Uh, yeah, the character's lost a life point. It's actually relatively healthy. Uh, ten, the monster loses two life points. Yeah, Aladdin, he's got, he starts off low, but he's got high agility um, and high luck, which means he survives a few things. And if you get some lucky dice rolls in combat, he can survive quite well, although that was not a lucky roll. Uh, so he's down to eight now, and uh, a five, which means we have defeated the skeleton, but we are down to seven. So um, he's doing okay, but he could be doing better. Um, but he's not doing as badly as Vorik. Poor Vorik, who is still injured. Um, two life points and faced with the prospect of trying to survive. Okay, let's take a tile. We have got, believe it or not, more than half the game to go still. 
Um, and okay, uh, but potentially more than half the game to go. I mean, it's, it, that's, that's a timer really. If if the time runs out, you're dead. Um, but our characters at least can continue until they die prior to that point. And we have drawn poor Volric, a dead end again. There's only so much good and bad luck this um, character can have, isn't that? Okay, but let's draw that room card. See if we survive a mountain troll. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath for poor Volric, but we will wait and see. As you never know. And a mountain troll on wait and see is a combat at three life points. So let's trust to the die again. Um, a nine. A monster loses one. A twelve. We roll. An eight. A monster loses one. Oh, we're doing well. And a nine. Monster loses one. We are the luckiest unlucky adventurer, aren't we? Now, oh, of Grimhand. He's got a clear path out now. Plenty of time, always time left. So we're going to start searching every room as much as we can, get as much treasure as we possibly can. And we have found nothing. Um, Anticlimax. And time passes, meaning Eladarin is going to make a break for something. We hope it will be the dragon's chamber, but the corridor will allow him to move that bit closer to whatever the destination ultimately is. And that's unfortunate. The, T, the, the, arrow, the arrow is orientated so that we are going to go nowhere. But before we can go nowhere, we do need to draw a room card. Empty. Uh, Volric has to search to try and find another one of those secret doors. Mm. He is, yeah, I think I have not seen so many secret doors for one character ever. I mean, I can't remember all, all the times I've played it, but certainly the last couple of years I've played it occasionally, not that lucky. So we can escape, we hope, because it wouldn't be, be the cruelest twist of fate if we were to draw a card like that, which has no means of exiting. Ah. Okay, so we are orientated. We cannot escape out of the tower. There's no exit. We cannot escape this way. We cannot go this way unless there is a secret door. We're going to have to search again, but before we can search, we need to find out what's in that room. Vampire bats, d6, minus 2. In damage, we've got a 1. Nothing happens for Fulric. Um, back on the other end of the board is Ulf, who searched last time. Going to search this time. Last time he searched in this room, he finds nothing. Um, time passes. We're now half more than halfway through the day here in Dungeon Questland, and our character, I don't know, is going to have to go back on the corridor there. And we have a normal room, and we will find that our torch has gone out. Now, this is a lingering effect where you basically, your turn is over, you can't see anything, torch has gone out. At the next turn, you have to call out three numbers, Roll a d6. If you won't hit one of those numbers, you can carry on. If you do not have one of the three numbers you've called out on a die roll, you miss your turn again. Um, but before we get to that unfortunate circumstance, let us go back up to the top of the map and look at Vorik, who is in dire need of some more good luck to try and escape this place. Um, I'm going to have to search. And we have found... 10 gold. Now, interesting prospect arises. If we search for the second time and um, we do not find a door, I have a suspicion that he dies. Be brutal stuff. Wow. So if he doesn't find a secret door on his next turn, 
Paul Vorick dies. But before that, we can go and see Ulf Grimhand again, who has searched twice now. He must move uh, Giant Spider. Right, Giant Spider is one of those things where you have to shout out a number again and then roll it. And if you roll, okay, we could, we could flee. There's a 50% chance of escaping if we flee, or we could fight. In order to get past it, we have to fight it, so we may as well we may as well fight it. And in order to fight it, pick three numbers, three, four, and five. Yeah, monster's dead. Excellent. Don't have to worry about the monster. Um, but poor Aladdin up there has to do the same thing. Three, four, and five again. Torch is good. Remove that torch goes out card from from his um, his character card. Remove remove that, and we can take our turn as normal, which is another unfortunately orientated room, meaning we are going back on ourselves to dead end after dead end, and it is at least empty, which is something. Um, Volric then. Make or break time for Vorik. He's not had the best of days. He's fought his way through dungeon tile after dungeon tile. He survived uh, a great many trials, but now he's killed, <laughs> basically. <laughs> One way or the other, he's dead. Roll a d12. He rolled an 11. No, he's, he's, he's dead. Yep, he's dead. Killed at the last in a dead end in a horrible dungeon. What a way to go. So our characters are down to two. And Olf Grimhand moved into that room last time, killed a spider, he can search, and he finds the jackpot. 200 gold pieces and jewelry. Time passes. Aladdin can search, he could move back. I think we're going to search because I'm trying. I'm going to try and get him to that dungeon, that that dragon, that dragon horde. Let's have a look. Shuffle the deck. Okay. Let's hope some of those um, room cards get shuffled back in, shall we? Okay. We found. Secret door, excellent. That wasn't rigged, honest. Um, but we have got him that bit closer. Um, Dunky. I believe we take. A, yep, we take a room card as before for going through the secret door. We found a crypt. Um, And we can choose whether to explore that crypt. Hmm. Yes, let us find what's in the crypt. We have a potion. Now remember, potions are either going to kill you or they're going to heal you. He's not sufficiently poorly with seven life points to warrant risking death just yet. It's the end of his turn then, moving on to Olve. We've searched once, we'll search again. A secret door. Hmm. No, I won't take the risk of going through the secret door. That is the end of the searching for him on that tile. Time has passed. We're coming towards the late afternoon now. Um, not a lot of time, but Aladarin is going to make a break for that horde. He sees the glitter of gold. And he's got a rotating room, so remember, you go in, you rotate, turn over. You cannot escape the way you've came. There is no way he will survive now. Um, no, no way at all. But at least he'll go out in a blaze of fire, if not glory, depends on whether he wakes the dragons. Um, Aladarin uh, has been. Ulf needs to move. Draws a room card. Giant spider again? Um, uh, three, four, and five again. Spider is dead. Normal turn next turn. Aladdin is going to 
go towards that. We have a dead end. <laughs> oh dear, this game. <laughs> I think I read somewhere that um, there's a 15% chance of actually getting to the Dragon's Horde and getting out again. Clearly not going to do it today. The Goblin, um, we'll wait and see with the Goblin. I don't know where the Goblin would run to if, he, if it runs away, but we'll just go with it. And on a wait and see, the Goblin has run away. Um, down the bottom here, over in a new room. He fought the giant spider so we can search for the first time, finding a secret door, but again, we will not uh, take use of that or make use of that because we can get out without laying any more tiles. And I'm pretty sure, barring something catastrophic, Olve is going to escape. Now, uh, let us move the tile, the turn, the turn track marker, and search at the top there. This is the first time oh, Adaran has searched that dead end. He finds it empty and he's in the same situation now as poor Vorik on the next turn if he searches and finds it empty. He's basically dead. <laughs> um, I don't think a revolving room... No, the, revo the rotating room, this one here, doesn't rotate back. It's a one-way rotation once in the game. But we can search again for um, of and Ulf has found another secret door. He's hogging all the secret doors, this guy, isn't he? Even though he doesn't need them. Uh, meaning we're getting very close now to evening time. And the last hope of El Adaran. Um, he gets a trap. Man, poor, poor El Adaran. Suffering the same fate as Volric the Brave. In a crossfire trap. D12 minus armor. His armor is better than you might expect at a five, but let's see what happens. Eight minus five to three damage. So he's actually down to four health. Um, but he, we now have that interesting situation. And I know I said he was he's probably dead, but I think he'd have to go back into this room, draw a room card. Um, next turn this is. Uh, and then go back, draw a room card in order to search. So it's going to take two turns before we search again. We've only got six six turns left in the game. I don't know. Meanwhile, however, Ulf can move. He will draw a room card. Finds it empty. Um, time passes. We will move. We will draw that room card. It's empty. Elf will search the first time. <laughs> Enough said. Um, time will pass. A ladder room will move. Draw a room card. Find it empty. Um, I'm just going to clarify the rule and searching whether we can actually search again or whether he is just dead. Um, Yep, you can keep doing this until you've run out of time. You can keep going back, but you have to only search twice in successive turns, move out, then move back. So we may get to see the dragon, we may not. But anywho, Ulf has searched once. He will search again, finding a ring. He's so totally won this game. Time passes. Um, oh, Eladrin will search. Takes D12 damage from a giant centipede, and he's only got four health. Wow. Wow. That is terrible. Wow. The ring of the ring of warning doesn't even sorry, the ring of blinding doesn't even help against that. So our D12 damage has done 12 damage. And El Adaran is centipede food. Meaning, Ulf can only. Uh, we thought. Um, no, Ulf is gonna escape. Hasn't got to the the dragon, 
but at least he's escaped with his life and he has got a total of 30 230 320 gold pieces was it worth it that's the question um so anyway, that was Dungeon Quest. Not a game to be taken seriously. It is a nostalgic trip um, through board gaming history. Uh, it's, this game has got quite a cult following, I, I understand, and I can see why. But at the same time, it's a game that you'll either love or you'll hate. Um, and probably not one I would show to my board gaming friends these days. Um, unless they too wish to have a masochistic evening dying in a dungeon in uh, a Dark Souls without any skill kind of uh, game. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I've had fun playing it and fun making this one. It's, it is a fun game if you're in the mood. Um, anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you for joining me again this time and I'll see you again.